Hi witches, happy Friday. Um, today I'm going to be talking about all about Anubis. Um, he's another one of the gods that I've been working with a little bit more recently and I wanted to give him a spotlight and um, again I'm dedicating a whole page to him in my book of shadows and he's like very important to me so I just wanted to make a little video and tell you a little bit more about this incredible god that I've been working with. Um, so Anubis is the Egyptian god of cemeteries, embalming, um, he's the protector of graves, of tombs, and of the underworld, right? So his name is sometimes um, said as Anupu or Inupu, um, which kind of dates back to the um, like Greek version of his name, which is Anubis, which is what we kind of commonly know it as. So his name, he has a bunch of other names kind of like other gods do, so like the Morrigan had the Phantom Queen. Kern or uh, Hearn has the horned god, um, and Bast is she of the ointment jar. Um, <laughs> Anubis is also known as the first of the Westerners, the lord of the sacred land, ruler of the nine ba uh, nine bows, the god who's <laughs> the dog who swallows millions. Hi, I'm dyslexic. Um, master of secrets, and he who is in the place of embalming, which I think is the most. Um, uh, like descriptive one. It's like the best descriptor. Anubis actually is far older. It's, he's the oldest god that I work with. Um, and he dates back to the first like first Egyptian dynasty, which was literally 5,100 years ago. 5,100 years ago is like when people first started working and worshiping Anubis. Eventually, he, he was first seen as like the lord of the underworld. So he was kind of more of the, um, you know, I guess almost like a Hades figure, if, if that if that kind of contextualizes things. But eventually, he was um, replaced by Osiris in the middle centuries of the uh, Egyptian Empire, and um, he he was so he was the god of the underworld, and then he kind of was like not pushed aside, but he kind of became more known or more associated with like ferrying the dead to the afterlife, judging the dead, um, embalming stuff like that. So kind of the um, less like ruling, more helping, I think. He is depicted with the head of a jackal, usually with black fur, and the color black is associated with death, as we know, um, but it's also protection. In terms of the ancient Egyptian pantheon, actually, the color black was associated with fertility and rebirth because the color of the soil of the Nile, which helped crops grow, was black. So jackals, which is the um, animal whose head he is most often depicted with, are known to eat dead and decomposing flesh, um, kind of like vultures, I guess. So Anubis is said to have protected the bodies of the dead from said jackals. So because he was depicted as like, the, a, you know, being with the head of a jackal, it was kind of seen that he had dominion over them um, and was like, hey, don't do that, basically. So one, like I was saying, one of his most important jobs is to ferry souls to the afterlife. So he's a psychopomp um, and he's specifically known to weigh the value of one's heart on a scale. So he has a scale, if you guys can imagine like, you know, like the very typical like scale type thing, not like a bathroom scale, but like, you know, it has like a thing that hangs and there's, yeah. Anyways, um, he takes your heart <laughs> after you die and weighs it against the weight of a feather. So if your heart is light enough and it's, it's you know, balanced enough, you are allowed, you are worthy of going into the afterlife. If you are unworthy, um, woe betide you, basically. <laughs> um, so, and this is kind of like a cool, like, like side fact that I just thought was really interesting. His daughter is the serpent goddess Kebeshet, which is a cool personal thing because I have a snake. Um, and um, she's also called, she's kind of like the embodiment of embalming fluid, which is kind of interesting. Um, but she is a serpent goddess. Okay, so this last fact is uniquely personal, like very personal. So I don't really expect anyone else to like understand what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna talk about it because I think it's really cool. Um, basically Anubis has a daughter named Kevishet and she's kind of the embodiment of the uh, concept of embalming fluid, which was very um, like central to uh, mummification processes back in the day. Um, and she is seen as a serpent goddess as well. As you guys might know, I do have a snake of my own who is in shed right now. Otherwise, I would have them out and like, you know, around during this episode. But um, he's getting bigger than I expected, right? So he may in fact be she. Um, we don't really know yet. I took him to a vet 
Um, cause I was like very certain that he was going to have a, like he, he had a respiratory infection, but I think he was just like smelling. Like, I think he was just, he's fine. Um, but <laughs> like I took him to the vet and the vet's like, this is a very healthy snake. Like you're just anxious. And I'm like, great. Um, so, <laughs> um, it was good to have a checkup, I guess. But anyways, the fact that she, like the snake is getting bigger than I thought, um, might mean that he, it might be a she cause uh, females, female ball pythons are usually a little bit bigger. Um, so I also might have a snake daughter and that just really, really makes me happy. I, it's a weird coincidence um, because I got the snake before I started working with Anubis and um, have always thought it was a boy. So, so some further personal notes about working with Anubis. Um, so like I was kind of struggling with the idea of like motherhood and like fertility and all of that with Bast, I've also just been like understanding mortality more. So this is a trigger warning. I'm mentioning death a lot in this, I'm sorry. Um, but like, it's not so much my own death that I am afraid of. Um, it's more like the idea of like handling the death of my loved ones that I just, I'm like, no, that's not a thing that happens. What do you mean? Like, that's incorrect, sir. Um, and Anubis has helped me kind of like come to terms with that a little bit in that it's just a natural process. I mean, obviously like I know these things, but I have anxiety. So sometimes I just like, I get all these weird spirals of thought, right? So um, I think Anubis has helped me kind of personify death a little bit in a weird way in that it isn't like scary. It's not like the Grim Reaper or anything. Like that's not what I'm trying to say, but in that I know my loved ones will be taken care of on the other side until I get there. Excuse me while I get emotional really quick. That was a really weird thing. Um, I find that working with Anubis, I get the most emotional and I'm not really sure what that is. I think it has to do with um, that same kind of thing that I get with Kerninus, which is like that healing male energy. Like it, if that makes any sense where it's just like the calming instead of the like fear thing. So um, yeah, it's just like a hard topic to talk about, but he's been helping me with this a lot. Um, and I think amongst all of my gods, I work with Bast probably the most these days, but Anubis is a close second. <laughs> um, so I hope that helps you guys understand a little bit more about this amazing god and my work with him. Um, again, everything is uniquely personal. So if you don't have the same sort of experiences, that is totally fine. Um, Anubis is one that I'm definitely like, there's a lot of shadow work involved with his, like working with him. So I can only like do some of like my workings with him. Like it's few and far between because I'm just like not there yet, but I think I'm getting there. So that's a good sign and he's helped me a lot. Um, if you guys have any questions about my workings, I'm always, I'm an open book, so I will tell you as much as I can. Again, I got a little bit emotional in this video and I don't know what that was, but we're gonna find out. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one, bye.